uh, dear friends and comrades, uh, these are interviews of the Without Censorship Wbrew Censorze Internet Channel. And I'm really pleased to introduce my personal friend, Draga Natrivkovic, director of the Center of the Political Studies in Bel Belgrade, Serbia. Welcome, Dragana. I'm very glad to have you here. Yeah, thank you very much, and thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Dragana, uh, we both interested in geopolitical aspects of the um, present uh, world situation, but sometimes in the scholarship, in the public debate over what is happening all over the, uh, the world, uh, one very important, crucial element is forgotten or, or even hidden. Because we discuss a lot about geopolitics, we discuss about the economical reasons of wars, of conflicts, of political uh, struggles, but sometimes um, I think that we forget about something much bigger, much deeper that 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 politics or even meta politics we forgot about ideological and religious context of um, any conflict and observing the world for the last let's say four decades so the so the the intensive growth of the uh, neoliberal uh, anti-christian agenda we can draw the line between the events uh in first in the uh, former Yugoslavia uh, and in general against the Serbian uh, nation uh, and the Serbian community, um, not only in Europe, but everywhere in, in the world, this propaganda, anti-Serbian propaganda was highly uh, introduced. Uh, then we've seen uh, how this crisis, crisis increased in Ukraine. And now there is a lot of other fronts of the global, ideological, anti-Christian, anti-Orthodox world. You have significant experience uh, researching situation of the Orthodoxy in Kosovo uh, after um, NATO and uh, Albanian terrorist aggression against Serbian nation, uh, against Serbian Orthodox believers in Kosovo. Uh, am I right that we can see a lot of similarities between this aggression against orthodoxy in Balkans uh, and aggression and anti-Christian policy of Kiev regime. Yes, yes, for sure. Yes, it's a good uh, uh, way to start our conversation. There are uh, too much similarities uh, because uh, you started from the uh war in yugoslavia nato aggression war in yugoslavia started before the nato aggression in 99 but uh why we had the war in the yugoslavia because uh in that time, global structures uh, didn't need any more the buffer zone, which was the Yugoslavia in the time of the Cold War. So uh, they decided to destroy this uh, country, uh, which uh, was good in some way. And uh, we had the conflict, and I think it was the practice for uh, that uh, after the situation after which came after the war in Yugoslavia, this was the pr practice for the, the Russia in the first hand and also for the Middle East and other regions. Why I'm saying this? Because in the time of the war of Yugoslavia, uh, Hantik Don published the book, uh, uh, the famous uh, Huntington book, uh, The Clash of Civilization. And the idea uh, was to create the conflict uh, between different religions and uh, different nations. And Yugoslavia was a good uh, experimental field because we had, as you know, uh, different religions. We have uh, Catholics in Croatia, Muslims in Bosnia, uh, Muslims in uh, Kosovo as well, as well, Albanian Muslims and Orthodox Serbs as well and di different nations. So this was the good uh, practice for these globalists. And uh, after this, uh, they did the same in the Middle East, in the now in the between Ukraine and uh, Ukraine and Russia. So, uh, what 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 is important to say about uh, 
aggression over Orthodox Church. Um, this is not a new platform. This is literally uh, this started the struggle against the Orthodoxy after the Second World War. Immediately in the time of the Cold War, we also had this practice uh, aggression against orthodoxy uh, because they tried to change the minds uh, of people in the communism. So this is also this part of the struggle against the orthodoxy. So in th this time, in the time of communism, uh, we also had very active this uh, Constantinople um, Patriarchate, uh, which is under control of uh, uh, American secret services. And uh, now it's not uh, secret anymore. This is not a secret anymore because the the U.S. Uh, publish archives about the connections between the CIA and the uh, Constantinople Patriarchate. It means they control this uh, one of the centers of orthodoxy. I mean, this was the, we can say, main center of, of orthodoxy in the past times, but now it's not anymore because it's very corrupted. And uh, they are trying through this Constantinople Patriarchate to create the problems inside the orthodoxy, to, to, to divide the ch orthodox churches. And uh, as you said, this is uh, the same in the Balkans, the Caucasus as well, Central Asia, uh, Baltic states as well, and uh, of course, the, all the former territories of uh, Soviet Union, the Ukraine as well. So we have we we can uh, see this uh, literally because as you said uh, also we have this uh, clash between east and west now we have the front line we have uh, the military clash but uh, uh, what is not so visible it is this uh, psychological war it's a uh, religious war spiritual war and also media war and economic war we have these sanctions and so on but uh, this uh, topic of, of uh, spiritual religious war it's uh, not so visible and uh, we cannot read too much and heard too much about this so uh, this is why i want to thank you about uh, this uh, for this interview and uh, uh, it's necessary to speak about this problem. So if you speak about uh, the problem in Serbian Orthodox Church, it's not only Kosovo, because uh, as you said, they separated the Kosovo uh, province, uh, it's Serbian province, they separated the Serbian province after the aggression in 1999. And now they're trying to create a new, new church because the idea is the same in the, uh, territories of formal Soviet Union, the, the territories of uh, former Yugoslavia, the idea is the same, to divide the orthodoxy, to create, they created already uh, new states and new nations as well. But now they want to create new churches. I call these churches proxy churches or state churches, uh, like uh, they did in Ukraine with this uh, or the so-called Orthodox Church of uh, Ukraine, proxy church. They did this, they tried to do this also in the Montenegro, creating the Montenegrin Orthodox Church. Uh, they did it in the North Macedonia. Uh, they created the so-called Macedonian Orthodox Church. And now um, they are going further. They want, want to create the Kosovo Orthodox Church. And in the future, they will, uh, I think, uh, wanted to create the Bosnian Orthodox Church, the Croatian Orthodox Church. So this is the main idea. And uh, uh, now uh, we can uh, return to the beginning. Uh, as we said, this started after the Second World War. Uh, the first head of the CIA was, um, uh, he created the doctrine struggle with the East. Uh, and his name was Alan Dulles. And in Dulles doctrine, one of the main uh, uh, topic is the struggle against the Orthodox Church. Because uh, it's uh, firstly, they think that Orthodox people are not uh, uh, 
uh, good for the globalization uh, because their spirit is strong. And the second, this is also the part uh, of uh, struggle against Russia, because now I think uh, in, the, in the future, especially, we, we will have the, the main Orthodox center in the, in the Russia, because the Russia and uh, the Russian Orthodox Church are really uh, not only on the first front line fighting against NATO in Ukraine, but also fighting for traditional values, for uh, spiritual val values, and uh, uh, they are trying to protect uh, the people of uh, from Satanism because these global structures, their fate is Satanism. Unfortunately, we saw that in the, recently in Olympic Games, and there are too many examples of of uh, this. So uh, after uh, yes, we mentioned. Um, this uh, Dallas doctrine, but we can also mention the Zbigniew Brzezinski, one of the uh, very important uh, stra strategist uh, American. So he also said after the collapse of the Soviet Union, we destroyed the communism and now it's time to destroy the orthodoxy. So uh, they are even not uh, hiding that they are struggling uh, against orthodoxy because, uh, I repeat, because the orthodoxy is not good for globalization. The orthodox people cannot be the part of the global world, how they uh, mention. Yeah, you mentioned a very important element. Uh, I believe that, yes, uh, after uh, this infamous Thomas given for the uh, Poroshenko sex, uh, or to, so the state uh, and boundaries legalized uh, uh, new or, uh, Orthodox Church in the so-called church in, in the Ukraine, we can recognize the position of the uh, uh, Constantinople Patriarchy. But in the yes. same time, uh, and you mentioned a very important thing about the CIA influence over the uh, patriarchy side and the politics of the Constantinople. But from, for example, Western uh, perspective and the Western experience, uh, and I believe that is very important for, for especially Polish viewers, we can recognize very similar processes uh, with introducing CIA and in general Western Secret Service influence within the Catholic Church as well. And from yes. the perspective, again, um, uh, Balkan wars and, and, and the struggle against Serbia, we can see that in this war, this kind of uh, spiritual war, as you said, uh, a lot of Catholic forces uh, haven't joined the Orthodox in the common struggle against the liberalism, against Satanism, against the, this uh, civilization of death, anti-civilization, but just opposite. They um, have been used as tools for the, for the destruction of, of, of Yugoslavia and as tools as a weapon against, against Serbian people. And in famous uh, uh, activity in this, in this destruction was of the Catholic Church and personally of uh, John Paul uh, II, Second, yes. still very admirable person in, um, in, 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 of course, in the Poland, in Poland, and in general, in between among Polish community. But in the same time, his personal relations with the American geopolitics and the influence of American Secret Service still need to be revealed. I believe. Yes. Yes, I can agree totally with you. Uh, yes, yes, I know. I can. Uh... Uh, confirm as well these relations and then this influence, which is very important. It means that uh, CIA is coordinating uh, uh, both the uh, Catholic Church and this uh, Constantinople Patriarchate, and uh, they want to use both these structures. I cannot say church anymore because the Constantinople Patriarch, it's not church, it's the, uh, the the branch of CIA, as I see. So they want to use the structures for their geopolitical plans. And they are doing this. They are doing this and uh, they are using as well uh, not only uh, these uh, spiritual structures or church structures or proxy church structures or how to say 
but they are using, they're co coordinating the political structures as well, because uh, if you, uh, you, you mentioned uh, Petr Poroshenko, which uh, initiated the creation of this proxy, new uh, Orthodox Church in Ukraine, and uh, we saw the finish when the Ukrainian Rada uh, decided to practically forbid the, the Ukrainian uh, canonical Ukrainian Orthodox Church, which, which is uh, the only one real church in Ukraine. Uh, so uh, we see this coordination uh, between political structures and uh, these uh, uh, church structures of uh, in first hand of this uh, Constantinople Patriarchate. But uh, we can see also the influence of Catholic Church. Why? Because the idea for the Ukraine, I recently uh, realized this when we organized the conference about the problems in Orthodoxy uh, in Bulgaria. So the people from UK, Ukrainian Orthodox Church uh, told me what, the, uh, what are the plans? Uh, the plans are to unite this fake Orthodox Church, uh, Orthodox Church of Ukraine, with Rome Catholic Church in Ukraine, and then do you need this structure uh, next year in 2025 is uh, uh, 1,700 years from the first uh, uh, council, Christian council. We can say ecumenical council, but in this time we didn't have divided church. Uh, the schisma, big schisma was in the 11th century. So uh, they want, and, and also uh, next year it's uh, uh, the Easter, it's at the same day in Catholic Church and the Orthodox Church. So they want to uh, create this unification of uh, Rome Catholic Church and this uh, Orthodox Church uh, uh, with the head of the, this uh, Constantinople Patriarchate and to pronounce this unity of uh, cre Christians. So this is um, uh, some uh, some how we can say this is the fake unity. This is uh, the fake faith. This is uh, the the satanism which coordinates with this globalism. And but they they are trying to pretend and they are trying to manipulate the people and to represent that uh, this is some unity between Rome Catholic Church and Orthodox Church. So uh, the, the Ukraine is a good example as well. And the role of uh, Vatican is really big uh, in all this. Uh, um, as you mentioned, uh, the Rome Catholic Church, we know that uh, even today's uh, Pope Francisco is also supporting very much uh, this uh, LGBT platform and uh, supporting these uh, you know, old globalist ideas which are not uh, Christian values, which are not uh, good for Christian values. They are harming the Christian spirit. But uh, this is the problem of political influence. Uh, I think, uh, firstly, the political influence of secret services and, of course, the political structures they are all coordinating. Yeah, we discuss in the very uh, sensitive moment for the for the orthodoxy, uh, not only in Ukraine but in general. After uh, introducing this law eight three seven one, this ban against, uh, in fact, uh, ban against um, uh, uh, Ukrainian Orthodox Church, uh, allowing uh, for the state government uh, legally. Uh, forbid to, and a form of religious activity in Ukraine, uh, which is considered to be uh, against the state's policy. So it's it's it's, it's something which is absolutely uh, unbelievable and and comparable in 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 any in any other uh, states. For now, it is absolutely accepted by the by the international community supporting Kiev uh, regime. But we have to also remember that this situation is not recent. It not uh, started with uh, Russian operation two years ago. It was uh, much longer. And again, I see similarities because I was uh, uh, 
in Serbia in the in the late 90s uh, I was in patch there and I observed that in the late 90s in the in the Kosovo um, this terror against Serbian started uh, with action against the churches um, yes. uh, attacked churches first to to, to, exactly. to, to um, well, and it was very symbolical, and of course, it was also of, of material disaster for this, this 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 heart of the Serbian and Orthodox community, historic with the very sign historical significance. Uh, I remember this this this, this uh, that time uh, fr recently freshly uh, burdened uh, Orthodox churches in 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 Kosovo. It was also kind of prevention to to to, to have these places as a, as a. Um, uh, Safe place for for Serbian community. Ucheka uh, attacked them with the with the with the great uh, physical but also spiritual intention. And again, I seen the boundaries. I seen the Ukrainian Nazis when they take over the Kiev Wavra, Wavra when they take over several thousand of 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 of, of uh, Orthodox churches in Ukraine under this Banderist uh, flag, under this uh, full support, of course, of Kiev regime. It was again very, very similar, but despite that on the time of the on the before the the Kosovo war, there was the clearly terrorist actions of 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 uh, UCK, and now it's covered by the policy of the kiev regime but apart from that it's still against the church yes i will uh, i will say that uh, this what we can see now in ukraine it's also terrorist uh, attack on church because uh, i'm uh, watching these uh, videos and uh, I'm in contact with some uh, priests and uh, metropolitans from Ukrainian Orthodox Church. For for the example, we can uh, uh, speak about what happened with uh, uh, Metropolitan Longin, uh, who is Romanian uh, ethnically. Uh, he had a lot of problems. Uh, he was beat uh, very uh, hard. And uh, these are the, I will say again, terrorist attack as well, because we can see that, and it's not only, uh, it's the same as you said, like in Kosovo, because in Kosovo, we had these terrorist groups of U UCK, or so-called uh, Freedom Kosovo Army, which is terrorist organization, and also coordination of uh, now the, the security structures of so-called Kosovo Republic. And uh, in Ukraine, we can see also the, for example, secret service on police is also supporting attacks on the regular Ukrainian church. And uh, they're allowing for the, uh, to these groups, uh, extremist groups like uh, right sector and so on, also to take these churches from the priests and the people. So this is uh, also the terrorism. And uh, yes, you mentioned uh, you were at Kosovo before, I think, before the bombing, yes? Yes, in that time uh, we had also the problem with uh, terrorism and the, it was the same, the problem in Tito's Yugoslavia as well with the Albanian terrorism. And once the these global structures decided to use this terrorism against the Serbs, and I think that that was the reason because the Serbs are not compatible for this uh, global platform. They have a uh, uh, good uh, spirit, they, they uh, have a big tradition and history and so on. So uh, they are in some way erasing the, the history as well and the tradition. They don't like this uh, so much. We can see this in the Middle East as well and the different regions. Uh, so uh, I will say that, um, yes, I compared the situation at Kosovo with the problem with the uh, Ukrainian Orthodox Church on this conference. Uh, it was my topic, the uh, position of Serbian Orthodox Church and Kosovo, and, and I compare this with Ukraine. Uh, so I will say that uh, we have uh, these international structures like UNPROFOR or UN the structures and also K4, which is NATO structures. And uh, after the bombing of Serbia, we signed the agreement, firstly, Kumanovo agreement, and after this, uh, they um, 
in the UN Security Council, they announced the uh, 1244 re resolution. Uh, so, according to this resolution, uh, the UN and the NATO is um, uh, responsible for the peace on the territory of Kosovo and Metohia, and they need to control everything and to uh, protect the churches and people and uh, all people which live there as Serbs as well. But in 2004, the Albanian terrorists organized the pogrom. Uh, they organized the pogrom at Kosovo. The, this uh, NATO structures and American soldiers and other soldiers, German soldiers, they, they were just standing and look, looking how the Albanian terrorists are burning our churches. And they burned uh, around 150 churches, uh, which are from the 13th to 17th century old. So they did not react. Literally, they didn't not react. I know example from the prison, uh, prison from the monastery of uh, Saint Arhangel. So the Albanian terrorist came, and uh, in the front of the monastery there was the tank with uh, German, uh, uh, with the German military officers. And Albanians came and uh, said, "Oh, can you please uh, go from uh, go away? We just want to burn this monastery." And they said, "Okay, no problem." And they left and they burned our monastery. So it means that these global structures, these international structures, UN and the NATO as well, they are just uh, they they are not uh, there for peace or for they are there for this uh, implementing this globalist structure this is the problem because from the time of the second world war we have this intention to uh, literally corrupt these uh, international institutions and they succeed in this so they are not uh, uh, doing what is their function to do to to, uh, to to protect the people or to bring the peace. No, they are they are just implementing this uh, globalist uh, platform. So I think now the the things are clear, and I think in the future we will, uh, uh, with the help of God, I think we will change the things in the better way. But this is the reality. So. Totally, uh, you're right. There are too many similarities between this, what is now happening in Ukraine with the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, with the priests, with the believers, with the metropolitans, and uh, this what is happening in Kosovo. And what is funny that uh, after this, they burned the uh, 100 and um, uh, 50 churches and monasteries sold and so on. For the example, the monastery of uh, uh, Ljevishka. Uh, and uh, after this, uh, they proclaimed that this monastery is Albanian monastery, Catholic Albanian monastery. Uh, so this is what they are doing now. They are uh, now they are renaming the Serbian Orthodox Churching and uh, uh, writing uh, the, uh, the in Albanian that this is the uh, Albanian uh, Catholic Church. They are taking taking the land uh, illegally, the land of uh, the property of the monasteries and the Serbian Orthodox Church. So also they are deporting the priests from the Serbian Orthodox Church from the territory of the uh, Kosovo and Metohia. And they are doing this with the support with these globalist structures because we can hear every day that uh, uh, new democracy, new, new young state, European young state Kosovo, there is democracy. There is no no democracy. This is continuing of terrorism of these uh, structures. Yeah, I think that it's another element you know, which is not maybe widely recognized that for the creating of the new uh, Albanian identity, uh, which was the, based on the on the on the on the well, let's say uh, very teen uh, base in, in in fact in the begin in the very beginning of the 20th century when they start to creating uh, modern albanian identity uh, they used both elements so from the one point of view that was the uh, muslim one but on the on the other one it was very strong influence of the 
of the Catholic uh, propaganda from the from from Vatican, from Vienna as well, from some of the Catholic orders to to to, to, to which uh, try to recreate Albanian Catholic identity, uh, but well. In the same time, it was Catholic identity in line with this, especially now global neoliberal agenda. Even if they use uh, these figures of uh, uh, in the same moment, Skanderbell, uh, who was Serbian, uh, Skanderbell, yes. uh, John Paul II, and Mother Teresa. That was that was something which is, I think, uh, not widely recognized. That this usage of the of the of the new created Albanian Catholic identity as well. But I have one more question about your um, very interesting uh, Sofia conference um, in defense of orthodoxy, because there have been uh, two important in absentia voices from two um, uh, Kerarchs, uh, from uh, Metropolita Zaporozha, Luka. Okay, yes. From who, who, was, who is under house arrest under under Kiev regime, who is you know political prisoner of this of this uh, ban neo banderis oligarchian Kiev regime, and from um, Archbishop Todosius uh, Hana from the Jerusalem Orthodox Church, because this is another another connection, another line uh, showing the hypocrisy of the of the so called global opinion, because we hear a lot about the fight for freedom, about the fight in Ukraine. We hear a lot about the fight uh, against terrorism in Palestine. Uh, but when we observe the situation in Gaza, for example, we can see that the Zionist aggression against Palestinians is not limited to Hamas organization or to any kind of in fact, terrorist or, or or even armed activity of Palestinian people. It's strong. It's definitely uh, ethnic, racist genocide against Palestinian people, with no exclusion to the Christian community, which is in Palestine, Palestinian. Yeah, and, yes. and Orthodox Church uh, in in Palestine is under aggression of the Zionist regime, uh, which is uh, which absolutely proves that the uh, Tel Aviv Zionist propaganda that is only about Islamism, only about, about the terrorism, is just a lie, because they made they provide ethnical genocide also against Christian communities. So we have to see that this under this propaganda about the human rights, about anti-terrorist actions, about uh, freedom fighting, and we can always find aggression against Christian community. So I totally agree with you uh, as well for the genocide against the Palestinian people and the Zionist uh, regime aggression. Uh, but uh, we can also uh, uh, see the example of the Syria and Iraq as well. As you remember, the, the Orthodox uh, churches was also under attack in Syria, for example. Uh, so, um, on the one hand, they are speaking about human rights, about freedom, liberty, and so on. But on the other hand, they are using this terrorist group to attack the religion, to attack the tradition, to attack, attack the civilian people, civilian population. As they use the Islamic State, for example, in Syria and Iraq as well. So we had situation in, in Syria, for example, that Hezbollah protected the, the Orthodox churches in the, in the Syria from the aggression of these uh, extremists from the Islamic State, which is the same like uh, this Kosovo Liberation Army. These are the same structures, because if we analyze, uh, I uh, worked, uh, uh, I uh, research on this topic, the connection between uh, Kosovo extremists and Al-Qaeda in that time. They had a lot of connections, even Bin, Bin Laden visited Kosovo as well. So uh, the, the this Islamic State is the succeeder of this uh, Al-Qaeda. So we can uh, find a lot of these connections. And of course, uh, we have all the time uh, the same structures on the one side. And uh, these are the Zionist regime, the U.S., these uh, secret services of U.S., 
uh, the political structures which are also under control and this uh, this is uh, what uh, this global west is uh, composed of these elements. And on the other hand, we have a uh, civilian pop 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 population, we, we have history, we have tradition, we have churches, which uh, they are attacking, uh, all, at the same time speaking about the freedom, the human rights. And this is totally hypo hypocrisy. But I think uh, the now, now that we can see this very clearly, in the past, uh, uh, even if someone mentioned this, uh, they will say, okay, he is uh, uh, speaking uh, some uh, unbelievable things uh, or he is uh, conspiracy theory terrorists and so on. But now we can see that these conspiracy terrorists are, this is practice, this is not theory. Uh, this is, this is uh, now very clearly, uh, we can see this and uh, yes, we have uh, the same example everywhere, everywhere. This is why I said they want to erase the history and tradition and religion as well, because if people don't know about their history and their religion, tradition, it's easy to control them. And all of this is uh, how they uh, can control the people. And uh, of course, it's... Uh, uh, not good to control, I don't know, 7 billion of people, so it's easier to control 1 billion, so let's uh, uh, create something to uh, also reduce population. And this is uh, unbelievable, these are very evil ideas, but uh, I think uh, it's clear now that it's the true, it's the true, it's not uh, conspiracy theory. And uh, this is, we, we have, uh, as you said, I have a lot of experience experience because uh, in my young years uh, all this started in the 90s and um, this is what uh, uh, we have uh, this experience with these structures from long time ago and this is why when this started in Ukraine I immediately realized what is happening and what is going to happen there uh, because with our experience it's easy to understand. Yeah, I believe that's 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 a very strong conclusion of our discussion of our, our observation as well. Because now uh, something we could think about, we could we could find the the, the, the some elements of that. Now it's uh, clearly visible. We can see the whole network of the of the uh, terrorists' uh, tools, uh, propaganda tools all over the world. Uh, in the service of the of the of the globalization uh, agenda, uh, when we can follow the tracks, for example, of relations between the uh, Caucasian Islamic states and the neo Nazis in Ukraine, that is absolutely obvious element. How one uh, center of the CIA uh, espionage in the in the uh, post Soviet area uh, have been related to the to another one in Ukraine. We observed how uh, terrorist uh, training camps of uh, so-called People's Mujahideens in Albania um, have been used as, a, as a, a very beginning of aggression against Syria and Iraq. We prepared terrorists to, to be active there. Yes. We can see we can see these elements all over the world, and always all these tracks, all these lines, all this network is centered in the uh, uh, Anglo-Saxon in general, USA and yes. UK and Zionist activity all over the world. And always one of the main direction of these attacks is against orthodoxies, against uh, believers, against the faith. And we have to be very careful because with your experience in Kosovo, uh, and I strongly believe that Kosovo, yes, Serbia and Kosovo returns to Serbia someday. And observing that in in, in present Ukraine, we can see how this network is spread over the world. Uh, in Poland, with uh, more than three and a half million uh, Ukrainian uh, migrants coming to, 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 to our country, and uh, we can see like with them a uh, structure of this uh, proxy church of the of created by Poroshenko and now held by, by Zelensky regime is introduced as a new quasi-political structure among immigrants, 
separate from the Polish autocephalian Orthodox Church, separate from the from the Polish uh, uh, political um, structure. Uh, they want to colonize the world against the faith, against the religious, against Christianity, against the Orthodox. It is only up to you if we can prevent it and we if we can uh, fight together against the street. So I totally agree with you. This is the fake church and the fake faith as well. And uh, I think we can uh, stand together against this uh, because uh, um, if uh, God is with us, uh, then uh, no, no, no one can be uh, uh, against us, uh, and uh, it's not uh, powerful enough to be against the God. So uh, we are speaking the true and witnessing uh, the true things, and uh, we are against this fake world, and uh, I'm sure that we will uh, win together, and uh, it's not a question of... Uh, one religion or one nation, we need to stand all together against this evil because in the Muslim world as well, they suffer a lot because of this and in our African people are suffering and people in Europe as well, as well. and people in the United States, there are very a lot of good people in the United States uh, uh, in United States, uh, which realize what is happening. So I think uh, this is a very good way to uh, stay uh, in connection, to speak, to work together and together to stand against this evil. And that's the point. We strongly believe that uh, truth is protecting us, that truth will liberate us and that the truth and only the truth will save us. That was a great pleasure to have you here. Our guest was Dragana Trivkovic, director of the Center of Geopolitical Studies from Belgrade, Serbia. Thank you very much, Dragana, for being here. Thank you very much, dear Akas. And please uh, follow us on Telegram. Please uh, subscribe our uh, YouTube uh, channel, comment, like, uh, send us a cup of coffee. Uh, and of course, stay with us for another interviews of Without Censorship, Brev Censure Internet Channel. Thank you very much.